1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May God bless the reading of God's word. This year, as a church family, we have had to say goodbye to three members. They are people who have been part of our church uh, family for many, many years. As a church family, we grieve that we will not see them again until the final day when Jesus returns. We also pray for their personal families that God will help them cope with the loss of their loved ones. As Paul writes his letter to the Thessalonians, he is aware that there are some members of this church family who have also lost their loved ones. Paul is a pastor. He grieves with them too. He comes alongside them to share with them words of encouragement and comfort. He writes these words down in 1 Thessalonians 4. Paul tells them that if, be if they believe in Jesus, they have hope. They do not grieve like the rest of humanity who have no hope. One day in the future, Jesus will return with those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. The phrase, those who have fallen asleep in Jesus, is a description of those who have passed away and believed in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They now belong to Jesus. When they die, they go to be with Jesus. Paul assures the Thessalonian church that parting with these loved ones is only a temporary measure. One day they will see them again when Jesus returns. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-14 Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Having lost both of my parents, I can understand the feelings of those members of the Thessalonian church who have lost loved ones. When we lose someone in our family, we re remember the times we spent with them. We contributed to their growth and well-being, and they to ours. We grieve when we see the empty room or the empty chair. We grieve, but we grieve in hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. There is an end to this grieving. One day Jesus will return and bring our loved ones with him. Most of these Thessalonians Christians, Thessalonian Christians do not meet in a church facility. This is because it is the first century. Christianity is still a young faith and trying to distinguish itself from the Jewish faith. Some of the Jews in the local synagogue continue to persecute these new Christians. These new Christians do not meet in a synagogue. Instead, they meet in their homes. They are meeting in house churches. They meet in their homes to worship God, to read the Old Testament scriptures, to pray, and to share in the breaking of bread. It is in the house churches that they encourage one another and share their lives with each other. If someone in their house church loses a spouse, a child, or a parent, it will be known to all the members of the house churches. They are there for each other. Paul encourages them to also remind each other that one day Jesus will return with their loved ones. Therefore, they encourage each other with these words. There are now two empty rooms in our house. This is because we have two children who are no longer teenagers. They have gone to university. They have charted a new life for themselves. There is an emptiness. Sometimes the house can get a bit quiet. But I'm grateful for the years spent in our house as they grew up. 
They are fond memories of helping them meet those challenges of life as they matured into adults. They are no longer teenagers. We can still drive to another city in Ontario to meet them. We are grateful for that. However, the situation is different if we lose someone due to an illness or an accident. They have gone home to be with the Lord. We cannot drive to a different city to meet with them again. We must wait until the day when Jesus returns. Irene lives in Bulgaria. She lost her husband while he was quite young. She shares her struggles about trying to cope with life without her husband. I had never thought that one day I would live alone without my dearly loved husband, but it happened. He died young, and I had to get used to new circumstances and to a new focus for my life. Once, when I was feeling especially lonely, I opened my Bible, certain that God would comfort me. I can't remember what passage I read, but I remember feeling as if I was folded in God's arms. I will, ne I will never forget that loving and tender touch and how I was filled with a joy that only beloved people receive. We can't ever be treated alone because God offers us a great gift, rich and abundant love. This love is unconditional and endless. Our Savior is much closer to us than anyone in this world could ever be. A miracle happens when Irene opens the Bible, God reveals himself to Irene in a most profound way. She feels as if she is folded in God's loving arms. She might be alone in the room, but she feels God's love. She tells us that God's love is rich and abundant. God's love is also unconditional and endless. Jesus, our Savior, is much closer to her than anyone else in the world. God speaks to us. When we read the Bible, somehow the Holy Spirit grabs the words from the Bible and plants these words in our hearts so that we can feel God's presence. This is how God appears to us until the time when Jesus returns. Through the reading of the Bible, God through the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The second coming of Jesus will be a global event. Paul makes it clear that when Jesus returns, everyone will know that he is returning. It is not only going to be experienced in a local setting, um, the whole world will be aware of this global event. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, uh, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 Jesus will return from heaven. The angels will accompany him. There will be the voice of the archangel announcing the return of Jesus. There will also be a trumpet call of God. It is like the arrival of a king from a palace when the king visits the people. The military band will blow the trumpet to announce that the king is visiting. Everybody will know that the king is in town. We have a bell in the church tower of our church facilities. Our building was built in 1868. For many years, the bell was rung to announce to the town of Streetsville on Sunday mornings that the Sunday worship gathering was about to begin. About a month ago, a volunteer came forward to offer to ring our church bell at 10.15 a.m. We now ring the bell at 10.15 a.m. before our 10.30 worship gathering. The whole town knows that our Sunday worship gathering is about to begin. Like the church bell, there will be a trumpet call from heaven when Jesus returns. The whole world will know that Jesus has returned. According to Paul, the trumpet call is not the only thing that happens when Jesus returns. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. All those who have died in Christ will rise first. There will be a mysterious appearing of all those who have died and believed in Jesus as their Savior. 
They will rise from the grave. This is indeed a mystery. Somehow the decomposed bodies will be renewed and the people who have gone before us will return with the Lord Jesus the Messiah. The dead in Christ will rise first. Paul tells us that after the dead in Christ rise, we who are still alive will meet Jesus and our departed loved ones. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. In two months or so, we will celebrate Christmas and have a family meal. Children will come home for Christmas. Families will be reunited. Each Christmas family experience is like a reminder to each of us of what we will experience when Jesus returns. Jesus will return with our loved ones who have gone before us. And we will have that final meal in heaven with Jesus and our loved ones once. We can expect a big family celebration when Jesus returns. The dead in Christ will rise first. We who are still alive will also meet Jesus and our loved ones. In a moment, we are going to celebrate communion. It is also called the Lord's Supper. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul explains what the Lord's Supper is all about. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26 First, Paul asked the Corinthians to look back. They looked back at the night when Jesus was betrayed by Judas. Jesus took the bread and told his disciples that the bread represents his body broken for them. Jesus took the cup and said that the cup is the new covenant in his blood. Uh, the cup is the new promise that God will forgive them for their sins. Jesus spills his blood on the cross for them. Whenever they partake of the Lord's Supper, they remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for them. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This meal is a foretaste of the meal we will enjoy with Jesus when he returns. This meal has a forward look. The last book of the Bible is Revelation. Revelation 19 verse 9 tells us about the future meal we will celebrate when Jesus returns. Uh, the angel tells the Apostle John to write about the wedding supper of the, land, of the Lamb. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. Revelation chapter 19 verse 9. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, we look back to the cross. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, we look forward to the wedding supper of the Lamb. However, this meal also speaks to us right now. Here is a story from Sarah. She speaks of a profound experience of communion at her church one Sunday morning. On a recent Sunday morning, as the worship service was about to begin, to begin I saw a toddler in a, a few rows in front of me, curled up tight in the arms of his father. The small child leaned in so close to his father's face that it seemed as if uh, the both of them were breathing at the same time. I could see the love they shared. Then the child pushed closer still and kissed his father's cheek. This scene made me think about communion in a new way. Communion is not just about recognizing Christ's sacrificial gift or simply confessing our sin and asking for his wonderful grace and forgiveness. It is also about coming in close and feeling the warm presence of Christ as he offers us his new life. Because of this simple demonstration of father and child, communion will now forever bring me closer to Christ's deep abiding love. Christ desires close communion with us, not just at these special times, but each and every day. Amen.